Is Pity Martinez leaving Atlanta United in the summer window? Find out this and more now. Welcome to Five Strike Five, where we tell you everything we think you need to know, even if you don't know you need to know it, we're gonna tell you anyway. I'm Tanner McLeod with Atlanta United Fan TV. Let's get right into it. <sighs> Red Bulls. That team Atlanta United just can't seem to beat unless of course you're playing for a berth in the MLS Cup, of which remember we have one and they have none. Atlanta United is now winless in six tries in the regular season against that team from New Jersey, not New York, after a 3-3 draw at the Bins on Sunday. The match saw the return of Venezuelan Joseph Martinez after his jaunt with the national team at the Copa America, and boy did Atlanta United need him. He scored two goals, one from the spot and one from a header at the beginning of injury time to give Five Strike fans a brief glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, they could finally beat that team from up north. But alas, that lead lasted very, very short and Red Bulls went down and scored at the other end by who else but Bradley Wright Phillips. As if things weren't frustrating enough, defender Florentine Pogba, who came in for the suspended Leandro Gonzalez Perez, picked up a hamstring injury in the first half. And to add insult to injury, everyone's favorite uncle Jeff Lerwinowitz received a red card after the match ended because of VAR, because well, he decided to be a dad and got a bit angry. He will now be suspended for the next three matches as if things weren't bad enough. Will we ever beat that team from New Jersey in the regular season? Who knows? A bit of good news though, the US women's national team took care of business and won their second consecutive and fourth overall World Cup. The Bins, of course, was showing the match on the Halo board and pretty much every TV screen in the place, and quite a few people came in early to watch the women take care of business 2-0 against the Netherlands. It has a lot of people asking the question, why doesn't Atlanta United have an NWSL team yet? It was one of the highest drawing markets in terms of TV ratings, and funny enough, the Women's World Cup Final this year drew a higher TV audience than the Men's World Cup Final last year. I think the US women having a hand in that probably made the difference, but still, the question stands. Should Atlanta have an NWSL team? One of the best ways to get over a frustrating and disappointing result is to get right back out and play again, and that is exactly what Atlanta United will be doing. They face off against St. Louis FC in the US Open Cup quarterfinals on Wednesday at Fifth Third Bank Stadium in Kennesaw. There are still tickets available to the match. If you still wanna go, go to atlutd.com slash tickets and you can find them there. The match may also see the debut of new boy Emerson Hyman, who was recently signed on loan from AFC Bournemouth in the Premier League. He's not able to play until the window opened on July the 9th, so, could we see the debut? I think it's a very, very likely possibility with the fixture congestion and matches coming thick and fast. The winner, of course, will advance to the semifinals and depending on results elsewhere, could see a potential matchup with our lovely friends from Florida in Orlando City. Maybe it'll be a match that actually means something for once, which may lend itself to the rivalry. They, of course, take on NYCFC, so there's no guarantee we'll actually see them. Another gift that Atlanta fans received on Monday was the fact that President Darren Eels of Atlanta United had a little bit with the rest of the front office that England would take care of the United States in the Women's World Cup semifinals. Of course, that didn't happen, and Darren, ever a man of his word, delivered on his side of the bet. The video came out Monday of him delivering tea, biscuits, and scones to the front office dress in his best barrister regalia from his time as a lawyer over in the UK. Darren, as always, is willing to have a laugh at himself. It's for the greater good. Thank you for being our president. Through the cryptic tweets and the silly videos, I couldn't think of anyone else to lead Atlantean. And of course, it is the transfer window, so silly season and rumors abound, and Monday was not a slow day. According to TYC Sports in Argentina, which is a very reputable source in terms of transfer news in that country, Atlanta United is looking to move on Pitti Martinez barely six months after signing him for an estimated $15 million from River Plate. The Argentina has had a frustrating season at best so far with fans growing tired of his inconsistent performances and not so great body language on the pitch. But at the same time, it's still been a short period of time at the club. He was slow to adjust at River Plate as well, but at this time, he's in the middle of his career. Fans expect a little bit more. But will Atlanta United seriously cut losses after just six months? The report said that they were looking to initially send him out on a loan, and this is further complicated by the fact that fan favorite Yamil Assad has recently become a free agent after the conclusion of his contract with Velez Sarsfield in Argentina, meaning he is able to sign with any team he pleases. I know there's a lot of people in Atlanta who would love to see him back in the red, black, and gold, but P.D. Martinez leaving already? 
that would be a real tough sell for a lot of fans and for the front office of Atlanta United. So that'll get us to our question of the day, which is very simple and straightforward. Should Atlanta United move Pitti Martinez on in the summer window? Get down in the comments below and let us know what you guys have to say. So that'll do it for us today. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share because it really helps us out so, so much. I'm Tanner McLeod. We'll catch you in the next one. Hey!